Hey guys and girls, Matt from SamRolling.com and I wanted to explain today about how you can basically export an OMF from Premiere Pro. Um, and this is using the Creative Cloud Edition. I've put, thrown in a load of random assets and we're basically going to go to File, we're going to go to Export, and we're going to go to OMF. This is probably where you are if you've already searched for this video. So now let's just crack through uh, the kind of methodology behind this. Um, so firstly, we have the title. You call it whatever you want. That's what the main OMF file is going to be. Uh, and then there will be a series of arbitrary names depending on the other options that you choose for audio files. Um, 48,000 is the default we want to go for. Sample rate means the highest frequency that we can hear. We need it to be reproduced successfully. So with 48,000, we can successfully reproduce without any kind of weird effects. 24,000 kilohertz and obviously we can only hear roughly around uh, 20 you can maybe hear 22 if we're a baby so uh, we're doing all right there because we lose it as we get older then we have bits per sample go with 24 for this essentially this is bit depth and um, much like a kind of color resolution I guess um, audio has even more so the difference between the lowest and the highest amplitude is basically bit depth and we want the highest uh, to give the most flexibility in post-production. Then with files you have two options. So embed audio, I would recommend this for smaller projects because what it means is you're going to only end up with one file which is an OMF file. Okay so stick with me here but it's basically one file and so generally the recommendation I guess is anything uh, kind of under four gig total um, because then that's easier to kind of send back and forth, all that kind of stuff. If you accidentally uh, corrupt it, uh, then obviously you're going to have to get a new one. Um, so there's some ups and downs there. Separate audio unlocks the uh, the next one below. Um, but what that means is that you will get an OMF, but it will be an OMF file that references actual media from other files. So if you do it with separate audio, a very key thing that loads of people ask me is basically they send me an OMF basically thinking that it's all embedded within just the OMF file, but it's not, it's separate audio. You need to send everything together, ideally in the same folder. Remember, it will be called this name, whatever you've called. And so then what that means is that you are gonna be able to uh, keep the file sizes relatively low because you can obviously send it in lots of different parts. Um, I use this definitely separate audio for AAFs as well. Um, but yeah, recommended for larger projects, definitely if they're over kind of 4 gig, um, it's easier to basically just send the reference audio however much you like. Let's say you've got the Wii transfer limit and it happens to be 60 gig, you can just send it in kind of uh, 3 or 4 Wii transfers as opposed to if you did embed audio, which would mean that it would be one 60 gig file, which is usually impossible in in most things as well. Um, so separate audio definitely for bigger things and so the format uh, is either going to be this I, A, I, F, F, or Broadcast Wave. Now, being a sound recordist myself, I generally record everything in Broadcast Wave, and so that's the format that I export at. It's a kind of worldwide uh, known format. It's basically a WAV file, but Broadcast Wave basically means it has extra metadata, uh, such as time code and all this kind of good stuff. Um, then we have Render. So we have two things here. We can basically copy complete audio files. What that means is if I, so this is a full file that I've copied in, if for the edit I only actually need uh, this much of it, right, so there was the whole file, I've, I've cut it down to this, what it means is that I'm basically going to give the person who is handling the sound post-production uh, basically the advantage of being able to drag this out in something like Pro Tools um, or even Reaper and uh, ooh, make sure I get everything right and so copy complete audio files will also make a massive difference to the file size uh, because obviously I'm only using a fraction of it here uh, but obviously I'm copying the full complete file so and again maybe if you're doing a smaller project copying complete files makes a lot of sense if you're doing a massive project generally you're going to trim audio files and this is where this handle frames comes in. So we all know about frames in terms of video so if it's 25 uh, frames as it is right here and my project is in 25 frames a second then it means I've got one second so instead of being able to pull out uh, down below here 
I would, if it was the handles were 25, I would be able to pull out one extra second. Um, now, that's, that's kind of useful for some things, just to help with transitions. Um, but generally, I don't know if there's a general recommendation, uh, but in terms of dialogue files, basically, just use your own judgment because the more you put in, the larger your general file size and your project is going to be, and that might impact actual kind of um, speed and workflow of your whole thing. Um, so, I mean, if you were obviously taking 10 seconds, then it would be 250. So 10 seconds each side, so it means you have 20 seconds extra total, uh, can be useful for finding things like alternate lines, extra stuff like that. Um, and include pan is just if you've panned anything then it's useful. Obviously, I've used stereo tracks at the moment. Uh, generally, most tracks will probably be mono, give or take, depending on your microphone. Uh, but you can include any sort of pan settings as well. Um, and again, the, your sound editor, if they bring it into Pro Tools or something like that, will have the option to disregard this anyway. Um, so yeah, include it or not. If uh, no one tells you, then just keep it kind of ticked. So if we do this with separate audio, I just want to show you uh, what it'll look like compared to uh, compared to um, yeah the other one so we'll call this uh, I don't know export test uh, really need to like clean up my game so uh, this is a separate audio dot omf so I'll make separate yeah within this that kind of makes sense so it's exporting it it's exporting the two original files. It's giving me those handles. And then it'll give me the final eventual file as well. Da, 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 da. Hopefully it works. So there's all the information, which is kind of useful. Um, don't know if there's anything special there. But then if we go into OMF and we do embedded audio, and we're still trimming the files, we're doing everything the same. Export test, and we're going to go for embed, and we'll call it embed. Then we're going to save that. It's going to look like it's doing exactly the same thing, but as we will probably see, it will be different because I may as well show you the whole end of the whole process um, just in case we've missed anything. As always, you can leave your comments down below. Uh, starting time, blah, blah, blah. So now let's go find it in my very messy desktop. I obviously remembered what I called it. So we have uh, embed. Look, everything is embedded into this file that I called embed, and that's the uh, OMF. It'll come with a log text file, which is actually that same exact message. So if there's any errors, it will tell you there as well. Uh, separate. Look, we have this, and often a lot of people just send this, but we have this as well, and this is linking to this essentially so that basically explains the difference between embed and separate as well so I hope you've enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up leave comments down below share this about um, yeah hopefully this explains a lot of different things for a lot of different people um, and any other questions obviously I've made over 550 videos now um, so getting in the swing of things getting in the swing so um, yeah look forward to seeing you soon so Till later, check out these videos, and I'll see you later. That's possibly the worst ending ever, but I guess I have to buy some more time in case